Welcome to the Two Vets Talk Pets podcast, hosted by veterinarians Dr. Lewis Kirkham and Dr. Robbie Anderton, who'll give you the inside scoop on the secret lives of your pets and have a lighthearted look at the latest animal news, health tips, and other random facts. All names of people and pets have been changed for confidentiality, so if a story sounds familiar, don't flatter yourself. Every owner is just as animal crazy as you are. So sit down, place your furry feathered or scaly best friend on your lap, and it's over to Lewis and Robbie. Hello and welcome, listeners, to episode 166 of the Two Vets Talk Pets podcast, where too much talking to pets is barely enough. I'm Dr. Robbie Ander, and I'm joined by a man who has just found time to uh, join us on the podcast after organising a nice little uh, uh, personal therapy session for himself and 69 of his closest personal friends, and also a, uh, a nice little uh, uh, cultural tour of the fermented sugar works of, uh, of Richmond, and uh, and then also with uh, 4,000 of his uh, closest friends just for a little get-together in Flinders Street train station yesterday, it's Dr. Lewis Kirkham. Lewis, how are you going? Wow, I'm very well. Thanks, Robbie. That's uh you're uh, you're really combining a lot of mix and match there of what's been happening <laughs> in the last week or so, I reckon. Just, um, just, tr- just trying to uh, uh, you know, time stamp this as uh, yeah. accurately as possible for, yeah, for exactly. anyone that's listening. Yeah, me and my 4,000 mates and all the police and their silly string. Just, uh, <laughs> just How funny was that? Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Goodness yeah, me. Uh, it's been a week, hasn't it? I, I, read, I read it described as uh, predominantly angry men. Yeah, well, mm. you know, yeah, there is that, you know, like, there's an awful lot of, uh, yeah, in- interesting, uh, interesting looking characters out there trying to defend all of our freedom. Lewis, oh, that's yes. what they're oh, here aren't for. They? Yes, they're, yes. they're protesting for our freedom. Just get a vaccination, guys. That'll do it. Get a vaccine. Just get a vaccine and, and follow, follow what you should be doing. Anyway, we don't want to get political, no. mate. <laughs> Let's get on to what, what, what's been happening this week. What's been happening at the clinic this week? Yeah, what do you got? Um, now, uh, so just as a, as a follow-on from, from last week, you remember we were talking about uh, the dog that we did the big surgery on that had the, the tumour in the small intestine that I had to do an end-to-end anastomosis. So oh, yep. there's a tumour that was wrapping around the small intestine and had to uh, re-stitch the, uh, the intestine back together. Took the staples out yesterday. Dog's doing really, really well, uh, which is which is tremendous. That's amazing. Um, and the owner brought in a, uh, a a slab of beer for everyone to to share. You know, to to say thank you very much. Very and it got nice. Me thinking about what the weirdest gift I've ever been given as a vet, and I'm going to be very surprised if you can top this one. Um, I once had a client give me a bag of buttons and a and a child's belt. What? What? A, a bag, bag of buttons. Of, a bag mixed, mixed buttons. Mixed right. buttons. I think I think she'd gone to the old Caribbean gardens back when that was still around and went there and yeah, bought a, a bag of buttons as a look. Thank you very much for looking after my dog. That's that's fine. That's what I'm here for. Look, here's a little token of my appreciation. Little bag of buttons. Wow, and a well, belt. And a belt. And did you and a you, belt? Did, did you pull up your pants then and, and put the belt on? Go, well, I've just thank thank goodness I've got that. And uh and you sewed up your cardigan and you're all good to go. I'll, I'll be honest with you, mate. I would have been lucky to have fit this belt around my thighs. It was quite a small little belt. It was almost like a, yeah, it was, it was quite a, well, thank you. That's, that's really kind of you. Thank you very, very much. Is that some weird kink or something? What's that? Did you, did you inquire as to what, what was the purpose of the gift? I mean, we all get chocolates and we sometimes get some alcohol and things, uh, you didn't didn't inquire the inquiring scientific mind, and you didn't go. Why do you think my waist is as small as my forearm? Uh, well, and, uh, to be honest, I was a little bit scared with what the answers could have been. So I sort of just n- not if that's the sort of stuff that's being uh, preferred uh, as a uh, profit as a gift. Probably best off not trying to ask too many questions after that, Lewis, because you never know what the answers are going to be. Yeah. Well, that's true. You never know where it's going to end up, do you, mate? Yeah. No. I, I don't know if I've, got, I've had a weird gift, but I certainly, uh, well, sort of, sort of a gift. I, we were in uh, Devon and I were in Italy, uh, right? Many moons ago. You know, we used to travel overseas and yes. uh, and enjoy the fruits of other countries and their cultures and things. Yeah, I, I it's hard yeah. to remember. With with, in, with relative freedom. Yes, back in two thousand and four, probably yeah. over in, over in Italy, at the uh, at the Emerald Grotto. Oh right, if okay. You the emerald grotto. It's like the blue yeah. grotto, but surprisingly, Just, yeah. emerald. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Little, not little, so blue green. shade, more yeah. a green color. Yeah, yeah, blue. excellent. So emerald grotto, it's probably the 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 lesser cousin of the of the blue grotto. But anyway, we're there, and uh, 
And Deb and I, you know, we, we go into the thing and it's sort of... Uh, it's, uh, right, hang on, you're talking Emerald in Italy, not Emerald up in the up no, in the Dandenongs. No, not... No, 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 no. Oh, is there actual a, Italy. Yeah, right, right. Is there a cave in Emerald in up, up near the Puffing Billy there, is there? Well, there, there might be, yeah, not a nice grotto up there that you can go... go yeah. <laughs> Very green up there, up around in the think, as well. He's saying it's dirty, just grotty, <laughs> grotty. <laughs> um, and uh, and we, we're in there, and I, I forget exact the circumstances of what happened. So you um you go down, uh, you, you buy your ticket, you go down down a lift down into the into the grotto and the cave, and then you get in a boat, I think, and you go out in the boat out out past the cave into the entrance, and you see all the stuff, and you, you know I think you get to swim there and bit and all that. So this is lovely, really, really nice. Yeah. But as we as we're sort of coming down. There's a German Shepherd owned by the owners of the um, of the Emerald Grotto. It happened to uh, a bit of a freak wave came in and swept it off the ledge into oh, the grotto. Really? Oh and no it was, way! And it was struggling. It was up and down, and it was like you know struggling to to, um, to to sort of get out of the water and that sort of thing. And you know, yeah. perhaps head went under a couple of times, and so eventually we sort of. Yeah, you know, I sort of like helped it out. Got the dog out of the water and on the on. on Stand the... back, everyone! Yeah, I'm a yeah, vet. Yeah, and so I've of got course, this. It's, it's it's Italy, so um, yeah, you know, I'm looking at the dogs. Going, well, you know, it seems all right to me. It's not really drowning, but you know, oh. and De- Deb's there going, "Il veterinario, il veterinario." Oh, nice. I was like, "Stand clear!" I <laughs> hear. Uh, pardon, pardon. I don't know what I was Attention saying. Attention there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Stand, move around, give some space. And so I went up to the dog and I. Pretended to examine it. It was fine. It wasn't even yeah. coughing, you know. You know, opened its mouth, put my hand in its mouth, like you know, like oh, I was geez. taping Jim. the line. Didn't yeah, Jim, Jim, it's nice in Italy. Yeah, it was a nice one. That well, it was struggling to breathe. You know? Yeah, so it had to do something. Hand in there, hadn't thought of the the uh, possibility of rabies in those sorts of European countries because yeah. we don't we don't have in Australia. Yep. Uh, look, I had a good, you know, pretended to listen to the chest. You know, got a little glass out, little uh, little tumbler, listen to the chest. Excellent. Don't have a stethoscope, you know, as you do. Yep. Dog, dog will be fine. Yeah. You know, good examination. Yep. Fine. Sort of let the dog go, and it's gone off into the lift. Boop. Paul pressed the button and got up the lift to get out of the grotto. Oh, really? So anyway, long story short, we got that uh, we got that little ride for free. Hey, sir, you go upstairs. You get the free. You get the discount. That's hey, I didn't, but that's 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 uh, that was uh, that was a pretty strange gift. I reckon. Not sure if it tops the little kink gift that you got, mate. But uh, but yeah. the buttons, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the buttons, <laughs> the buttons on the lift. Well, that's but, yeah. well, that's all right. Yeah, and the, still the a... little belt to yeah to hold and, up and... your tiny pants. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Hey, not not exactly a gift, but something a bit weird. Oh, well, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, what, what's been? Oh, I, um, so when you're speaking about chocolates, I, like usually I'm a fiend at work for eating all the chocolate. Like you know, if, if ever I'm away at work, away from work for two weeks, you come back and the cupboards are bursting with chips and chocolates and lollies and all that sort of stuff because I haven't been there. Just just taking the top off it, you know, just trying to make sure that the that, that the the supply cupboard isn't overfilling. Um, and this last week, I realised I'm probably putting on a little bit more weight than what I should be. So I haven't eaten any lollies this week. And I, I kid you not, there's been three bags of lollies, three different lollies. Like, yeah, we've got boxes of roses, chocolates. We've had lint balls. We've had all this stuff. And I have chocolate chip cookies. And I've not touched one, wow. not one thing this week. And it's been killing me. Wow. Have you let you had to let another notch out on that tiny belt, mate. Did you just, <laughs> well, I found the tiny belt again, Lewis. I wanted to try and see if I could fit into it. <laughs> oh, now this week I, um, uh, sent you a photo. Did not mate. I sent, I don't know if you got it. Uh, a, uh, a photo of a dog that had been at the beach. We've got a lot of the Southern. Oh yes. Northern Pacific specific as from Kath and Kim sea stars. Yes. Specific yeah. as they're known. Yes. Specific. Sea stars washing, washing up on the beach around Port Melbourne at the moment. And we've got a, quite a few dogs that are getting into them. Right. And we had a, we had a dog come in that, uh, that uh, swall- uh, owner said swallowed a starfish. And so we thought, oh, I'll make it vomit. It does, does give them a bit of gastro. It's not one of the poisonous starfish, but certainly one that causes a bit of vomiting and diarrhea. And so we got the dog in and we thought, oh, I'll make it vomit. Vomit up two perfect uh, intact starfish, the size of my palm of my, like my whole hand. Wow. I, I mean, I'm not a big handed guy, but you know. No. It's, it's a good a size. Piece. Yeah. It just, just totally intact, unchewed. And I thought, mate, look, we could have a little quiz. And I, I'm tipping you won't need much to guess, but what breed do you reckon we're talking here? Um, Male, two starfish, 
the size of my hand. Yeah. Are Under we talking chin. a Labrador here, Lewis? Hey, hey. Does this happen to be a Labrador? Ring. Damn, Congratulations, yeah. you the, win, mate. Yeah. The one and only correct answer. I got an interesting uh, yeah, little thing when we're talking about news section about Labradors later on as well. So, right. so, oh. so uh, for, for much the same same sort of reason as for what you are what you were talking about there. Um, uh, I I had one during the week yeah, where you were talking recently about the uh, the Port Melbourne men's shed that that, that uh, built the uh, the stick yes. bank at yes. your local park. Um, yes. And and literally. Uh, a week after we had that conversation, uh, we had a dog that uh, decided to try and, uh, it had been watching the Olympics, it turns out, and it decided to try and pole vault itself um, off a stick. And uh, yeah, th- so it happened the day before and the owner said, oh, yeah, there was a bit of blood in his mouth and we Ooh. thought everything was okay, but now he's just a bit, you know, just seems a bit irritated with his mouth, you know, just what doesn't seem like he's yeah. very happy. Um, and so this is a, Sean saw the, saw the consult and he said, oh, I can't really see much down there said, mate, you're going to have to sedate him. We're going to have to get in there and have a look because we won't know, you know, until, until we get in there. Uh, no, nails, nails are nice and trimmed down though, weren't they, Sean? Perfect. Anal, anal glands okay? Awesome, yeah, awesome. Yeah, all yeah, good, yeah. All good. yeah, he done all that, trimmed all that down, but we all might the, look in the, the mouth. Stuff. We might um, look in the mouth, Sean. So, oh, no, no, he knew he had to look at the mouth. And he's gone, oh, <laughs> do you reckon I should? Is it? Yeah, no, look, let's, we mirth, that's, we that, that, is a, that is definitely one that we want to be getting in there and sedating and having a look. Because if there's a bit of stick in there, you want to try and get it out before the uh, before the, the, the tissue all heals over. Before so, it grows into a tree. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's got a little yeah. root growing out of his mouth. Mm. Yeah, um, yep. So I took a, um, uh, we got, sedated the dog and had a look. And he had about a, a uh, again, I sent you the photo through as well. It's about a three centimetre long laceration, about a centimetre and a half deep, right at the base of the tongue. Ooh. And like, yeah, Rodeo, well, this is this is going to need some stitches in this bad boy. Yeah. Um, and so, I don't know about you, but, you know, I, I stitching up tongues, you, I know you've got to do it, but it always seems like such a futile thing because it just seems like the stitches just always pull out, you know, yeah. like, because it's a... It's a muscular organ and their dogs are constantly licking and chewing and mm, moving their mm, tongue around and, and all sorts of stuff. Food's going past. Yep, yep, oh, yep. man. It drives yeah, me it's insane. It's a tough area. Yep. Um, so I always say to clients, look, we're going to put the stitches in there, but it's mainly just to try and cut out the dead space while we're waiting for it to start to fill in. And we've got no idea whether or not it's going to hold together, especially the bean at the back of the tongue. I don't want you trying to find it. Um, just come in in 10 days and we'll have a look and we'll see. They're really going to be high-fiving because finally my stitches have worked. Or, yep. yeah, and, and yeah, again, all mirth aside, you know, I've stitched up a few tongues and they always still go all pretty well, but you just yeah. want to try and hold them together a little bit towards the end. So um, I've, I've put two layers of stitches in there. Looked magnificent, showed the owner the, um, the things afterwards. No more chasing the sticks. Thank you very much. Mm. You know, that's that's definitely a no-no. So the dog came in for his post-op check yesterday. It's this little nine-month-old Westie. And I tell you what, you know, even just to get like his, I mean, Westies can always be a little bit, you know, um, you know so, so there are some, like particularly some of the, uh, you know, our Patreon listeners that listen here, they've got wonderful <laughs> Westies that uh, that'll let you do all oh, I, know who, I think I might know who you're talking about. Yes. And, yeah, and yeah hello, hello to Archie out there, yeah. you know, good, good, good old Archie. <laughs> Um, uh, but this little fella, he's, he was pretty anxious to try to have a look in his mouth. And so taking my time and all, just gently giving you a nice little swoosh around the mouth and everything's fine. Like, Lift up your lips and I'm just going to yeah. gently yeah. try and have a look. And because it's so far at the back of his mouth, as soon as you go to open his mouth up, he just sucks that tongue straight up the back of the mouth mm. like you're trying to give him a tablet. I said, yeah, look, there's no way we're going to see here. And I'm not going to sedate your dog just to have a look. Let's assume that everything's gone really, really well. And if there's any problems, then you come back and see me. We'll sedate him. <laughs> no. I'm sure everything will be fine in there. Yeah. No news is good news. Everything's wonderful. Um, I said, if you want to try and have a look at home, go for it. But you know, you're going to have to open his mouth and pull his tongue right out. I don't like your chances. Mm. But anyway, mm. well, it's one of those yeah. things, isn't it? You, no you more do chasey best. sticks. You do. You do your best when you're in there, and you sort of think, well, if we haven't got any symptoms, must be okay. Deal do with symptoms if we if we if we get it. So, but I mean, yeah. great the mouth. Anything in the mouth heals very well. Yeah, you know, it does heal generally very well. Yeah, one well, of the absolutely. fastest healing parts of the body. It sure is. It sure is because it's um constantly getting bombarded by bacteria and losing. You know, you, you burn it when you're eating a hot pie and all that sort of stuff. So you know, it needs needs to have the ability, Lewis, of being able to re, uh, regenerate itself very, very fast. So it's the reason why it's really good when you're doing yeah you know, to take teeth out because it'll often heal really, really well. Yeah. Did you do you think of playing maybe a kiss song or something to see if like the Westie was keen to. Stick its yeah. tongue out. Ah, like, uh, Gene Simmons. Rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gene Simmons style. 
but mm. then he just bites on a uh, on a blood capsule on the way out, and then it's all just <laughs> just red. It's like, oh no, it must my stitches. My yeah. stitches have opened up, and he's bleeding it's, everywhere. It's worse than what it was. It's the sauce from the hot pie. It's just yeah. it's just killing me. It's everywhere. Anyway, well, I, I did say to the guy, I said, look, I'll be honest with you. I saw a dog last year that stuck its tongue in a in a paper shredder, oh, and, yeah. and 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 it, and it went okay. I think your dog will be fine. <laughs> yeah, very good. Well, uh, things in the mouth, mate. I'd uh, first cat this week a, a bit of a bubbler. A bubbler, yeah. a bubbler. Yeah, bubbler. Hey, like, yeah. He didn't, didn't doesn't play rugby league, does he? Well, yeah. Our NRL fans out there yeah. know what, what we're talking about. <laughs> I was, I cat did a couple of two, interesting two behaviour cases. Run the by. He won. Uh, Cat that uh, that liked to drink its own urine, like a goat. Yeah, well, like, do goats do that? Do they? Yeah, billy goats. Billy goats. They turn. Oh. That's why they. That's why they got their oh, dirty beards. Kid. They turn turn around and they wee on themselves. Well, isn't that a pheromone There's thing? T- I think that's. I think there's a pheromone thing around their mouth. They want to just oh, smell like oh, I'm yeah. tough or something. Oh, Pretty well, sure that's what Carney was the, doing too. Yeah, dr- drives drives the girly goats wild. <laughs> Oh, but, but I couldn't believe it. I was like, no, like, oh, oh. Yeah, it doesn't drink a lot. But if there's a if there's a litter tray of wee there, it'll drink the wee out of the litter tray. I was like, what? Wow, it was really yeah. real. I've never heard of that before. And then almost in the same, I think the week before, I had another cat that like pooing in its water bowl. <laughs> yeah. I'd, like, I'd like to hear that. It's heard its owners do it. So you guys, you guys don't <laughs> poo into 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 you know bits of dirt. Or cat monkeys, litter. Monkey see, monkey do, you reckon, mate? Monkey see, monkey do poo in the water bowl. Kaplunk. Why not? Likes yeah. the kaplunk. <laughs> <laughs> it was that. And so, so I was like, oh, so, you know, I said, oh, well, that's really weird. And the owner was like, yeah, well, maybe you can do some research about it and get back to me. I've gone, all right. This is in my research right here, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more, Robbie. Tell me, what do you know? So I was like, oh, well, you know, have you got a water fountain? Yeah, it's got a water fountain, but, uh, you know, <clears throat> we'll drink out of that. Not as much. Much prefers to go and um and I don't won't poo in the water fountain, but we'll poo in the water bowl. So I said, oh, um, she goes, oh, we'll do some research. I said, oh, I'm not sure I can do much research, but I'll tell you what. Oh, let me just Google that. Put, cat cat mm. pooing in water bowl. <laughs> why don't you maybe just put a water bowl in the litter tray? Solved. A How's water that? bowl in the litter tray. A water bowl in the litter tray. Solved. And then put the one it's drinking from, elevate it. Put it on the table or something. Well, maybe right. table, you don't want to poo it on the table, but just elevate it a little bit so it can't sort of get up and perch on it. So it's kind of yeah. just off the ground enough so it can't sort of, so it can still reach up and drink from it. Um, I haven't heard back, but I thought, oh, well, there you go. That'll be 100 bucks. Well, that's a, Come back I mean, next week. No. And, and A, that takes some pretty good aim. Like that cat, like, I mean, most, some, some cats will miss the bowl when they're doing it in an actual litter tray. Right, but to be able to actually back it in and just you know thread that needle of uh plopping that polywaffle right in the water bowl, that takes some pretty good uh you know it's some pretty good aim right there. Yeah, and I didn't didn't tell her to just check a little glass of water she's got by her bed and make sure that was. <laughs> <laughs> and she takes cat- glasses off and goes to bed and has a bit of a bit of a sip during the night. You just want to check it's not as a cat hasn't gone. Ha ha, gotcha. Puts the puts the false teeth in there, and then yeah. there's a there's a little. There's a little little bum nugget floating bit, around in there bit, as well. Bit extra in there. Ooh, nice stuff. Hey, now did she say anything about how formed the poo was? Like, was it a well-formed stool? Yeah, all normal. All, all normal. normal. Yeah, wow. All normal. Well, I she, she must have had, had the cat on a pretty good food. Then, what sort of food she, could have she had it on? Well, it's funny you should ask, mate. But definitely on the cat delicate care. Oh, right. Yeah, skin and did, stomach for sure. It would have been skin and stomach, mate. Guaranteed. Did, did, do they have a special, uh, you know, anti-water bowl pooing? Claim on their food? No, but good thought. We put must put that through management. Through. Hey, uh, do you know what? I reckon, I reckon we could probably categorically say that there is no cat on delicate care that is pooing in its water bowl. So maybe there's a good chance that this uh, that this owner of yours, if she put the cat on, is you know, if no other cat on delicate care is pooing in their water bowl, there's a there's a theme there. Why not? Oh no, yeah, well that's true. Um, but was on delicate care, so that kind of debunks that a bit. I oh, think. was it? Oh, oh okay. yeah. Yeah. Anyway, good thought. Good theory. <laughs> but it was a bit stressed from pooing in the water bowl. Yes. What could we give it? Oh, we, we could have could have given it some zilkines from oh. some uh, a mild anxiety relieving medication. Comes in a capsule form, a little bit of powder. You know, put that Fantastic. on there. Just helps. Yeah, you know, it's the uh, the the protein that comes from milk that helps babies get milk drunk, so they help to go after little nine eye after they got a 
tummy full of milk. So Excellent. instead of having to try and think about breastfeeding your water bowl pooing cat, you can just uh, use the Zilke. Exactly. And if you've got a cat that's bubbling, bubbler, bubbler cat, or a cat pooed in its water bowl, let me know. Is yeah. this a thing? Because I always thought, I mean, I always learned from behavior stuff that cats generally don't like to poo near their water source. Absolutely. Cause they, yes. they like to keep it clean. It's pretty sort of, it's uh it's um, biology one one I suppose you don't yeah. poo where you eat or you wee. It's kind yeah. of, um, they're, they're pretty, pretty stand. So the most cats don't like that. So interesting that it was choosing one was drinking its wee, and the other one's choosing to poo in its drink. It's all confusing, mate. Different uh, strokes to rule the world. Yeah, so let us know, if, listeners. You got a cat's bit bit different. We'd love to hear about it, wouldn't we? Take a video and send it to Lewis too. We'd love to see. It. I do. I would actually. <laughs> Believe it or not, I love that. I love that sort of thing. And Lewis. also, thank you to our, our Patreon guys. Yes, absolutely. I mean, um, and yeah, yeah, go go delicate care. They probably got a little, you know, only a, only a little a little mention. We'll give them a little long one. Go go delicate care. Rah rah rah. Oh. You feel yeah. we, we shortchanged them a little might bit? Might have mate. done, might have done. Yeah, really? we'll just, we'll, oh. just put, we'll just put a little bit of mayo on there. Australian Ooh. mayo, Australian owned, comes from Perth. You know, maybe, with a, maybe I should send a little handful of big kibble back to them in the mail just to just to even it up. Should you say, think we're getting, guys, getting a bit much? Go. Sorry, guys. Yeah. We've underdone it this week. <laughs> here you go. I'm sure they're happy. I'm sure they're happy. happy. We'll talk about we'll talk about it a bit later, I reckon. There's a good yes, topic yeah, on it coming quite up. Possibly, yes, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Then we, then we might, o- might overdo it. We we'll have to ask for that. Send it back again. That yeah, with a kibble. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and I, yeah, so thank you to our Patreon guys. I, I might put the photos of the uh, the two hand sized starfish, hand sized starfish on Patreon, and also the um, the photo of, of the damage done by the stick. Oh the yes. Dog. Well, I put those on yeah. Patreon. There we go. Shock them on there. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. So if you want to go good. and Sounds see good. some great photos of what's been happening in our week, guys, go to Patreon. Check it out. Go and sort them. A couple out. of bucks a month, you can uh, less than a less than a can of silly spray. You can uh, you can support us. Silly yeah, string, capsicum flavored uh, silly string. Silly string, yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway, uh, mate, what's what's been the news this week? Now, um, so this is an article from the Age, which was uh, I guess following on again from all the pet food stuff that was um, coming up. This is on the uh, you know Sunday article or Sun- Sunday Age a couple of weeks ago. Um, kibble versus raw. Pet food has changed, but is there right and wrong? From Sophie Aubrey, and this was published on the thirteenth of August. From brothy bowls of noodle soup to platters of sushi, Bowie's meals look like they'd be right at home on MasterChef. The five-year-old Labrador Retriever's diet is fancier than that of many humans, but he didn't always eat this way. Owner Reza Renata from Hurstbridge, just outside of Melbourne, started him on kibble as a puppy. But after cycling through a few brands to try to fix his digestive issues, she transitioned him to a raw diet in 2018. Renata 36 says learning about all the needed nutrients and supplements was a bit daunting at first, but she saw improvements to Bowie's health and coat. She since kept it up with the support of her vet. Yeah. I think think you pick your battles. It's like, right. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, you're dead keen on that, that's you, you do whatever's going to work for you, Renata. That's absolutely fine. Well, that's Um, right. A bit, a bit, a bit daunting on online. She's saying a bit daunting. I mean, surely there's a, an online course or an online certificate she could have done of, of some sort, isn't there? There's some reputable couple of hours learned all about nutrition. Oh, hang on. No, no, that's, that's, a, that's a vet degree, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, anyway, yeah. 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 The, the one for four years. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah daunting. Uh, understand. Well, you, you can, you can still do that online crystal course and the crystal healing course. Oh, do you get, do you get points? Do you get a discount 10% off for doing the combining that with the online daunting Raw feed one, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think there's a couple of subjects that are that are the same there. So you can actually get some, <laughs> yeah, get some credits, get some course credits. Um, nice. Bowie's meat haul now takes up two thirds of the freezer, while he and Renata share ingredients like fresh fruit and vegetables. She began posting photos on Instagram of Bowie's food during the pandemic. I love cooking, and he's my only customer since the lockdown. And her one big rule is variety. Imagine eating the same thing every day, Renata says. I don't preach that everyone should do raw and fresh feeding because every dog is different. Some dogs are better with raw. Some are okay with kibble. I think you just have to be open-minded. So there's a there's some pictures here of uh, Reza Renata's posting some, uh, some pictures of Bowie's food uh, on her Instagram. One that's a, um, a dog-friendly ice cream that is a... Uh, 
like an upside down ice cream kind of, uh, actually it looks like it might be what your cat dropped into its, into its food bowl, but just a little <laughs> bit more sort of mag magically, uh, you know, uh, multicolored. Um, mm -hmm. There's also a, a surf and turf there where it looks like there's some raw steak and there's a, a raw egg that's served up in a half of a, an egg, uh, an egg shell there and some, uh, you know, a bit of a, might be a sardine or something like that. It may be a little mm. bit of kale and also a sushi like degustation <laughs> where there's bits of kiwi fruit and there's some fruit there and there's some other things that are rolled up with bits of fish and other stuff poking out wow. of there. Now, there is actually a picture there of Bowie. And as it turns out, as we were talking before, Bowie is a Labrador. Now, <laughs> Lewis, I'm wondering, you know, have you ever known of a Labrador that without having had some sort of, um, I don't know, say liver failure or kidney failure? <laughs> Near-death near illness, yeah, yes. Yep, yeah, that, that hasn't just eaten anything, <laughs> including, you know, uh, Pacific starfish um, that get put down right in front of it, um, that would need to have a master chef worthy sushi like degustation menu. My, well, I, no way, mate. My concern looking at those pictures is I'm more concerned for the plate that he's going to eat. He's going to, he's going to eat that food and the plate. I mean, that's, that's just a morsel. That looks like it's taking her hours to make. And that dog is literally home. Oh, go on, go on. Go on. He's a Labrador. Oh. He's not going to enjoy that food. He's not going to. He's not going to take a small bite from each little part and chew it thirty <laughs> times oh, no. and savor it and go, "Oh, what's what's giving me that umami sensation <laughs> on the back of my tongue?" No, he's just going to eat the whole oh, damn thing goodness. and probably wow. cooking than what he would do if you just spread out a whole lot of dry food around in the backyard. Anyway, the article goes on. Yeah. It's part of a wider trend in which pet food is inter intersecting with wellness, borrowing the glossy style and language you might associate with human clean eating values, whole natural ingredients, no hidden nasties, and a pledge to fix an apparently broken industry. From luxury pet grocers to personalized meal plans, scores of new businesses are catering to pets' upgraded status as fur babies as Australians spend $4 billion a year on pet food. Wow. So, um, there, you know, there's a few things where you're know, talking about different, uh, you know, different organisations that are doing things, different startups. Um, and there was one uh, a party here where it's um, Fiona Black at 53 adopted a one-year-old beagle, Charlie, in August of last year, her first dog in more than two decades. And she said the food options are overwhelming. Back then, your choice was pal, pal and pal. That was it. Now you scroll on, there are hundreds of different types. And then you start thinking, why don't I just buy the stuff in the supermarket? What's the difference? Blackett from North Sydney's Northern Beaches has she's, tested several. She, she's, she's forgetting. I think she's leaving one out there. There was Chum. Chum. chum yes. It's so, so chum chunky. You so can chunky. Carve it. You can carve it. <laughs> yes. And do you, when you first graduated, mate, did you ever, you could always tell the dog that was on PAL, I reckon. Oh, oh. Wouldn't you? you? Oh Could yes, you? yes, yeah. From the waiting room, in that when it, when it was when it was under an anaesthetic and the sphincter released, when it was waking up in the kennels, absolutely, you could tell those dogs that are on pal. One hundred percent. You and wouldn't have to like, ask. You yeah. just walk. You wouldn't have to ask. So, what are you feeding your dog? You just walk into the concert room and a quick gag, <laughs> oh, oh. and you just start typing away. Obviously, on pal. Yeah, of course we get. Yeah, our lawyers want us to say that not all dogs that are on pal will, will smell like that. I mean, we don't want we don't want Mars coming at us. I just I don't think that my experience, worry. mate. My experience, dude. <laughs> That's all I can talk about. I'm not saying that. It's just what I've, I've, I've happens in yeah. my. So Blackett from Sydney's North Beaches has tested several fresh and dry diets on Charlie, including a hellishly expensive brand Ooh. that she says cost more than her own food. Gee whiz, that's some pretty expensive food, or very cheap food for her. Um, she's found that high-quality kibble, usually topped with meat from the barbecue, suits him best, but she still second-guesses herself when she reads chatter online. Sometimes you think, I don't know if I'm giving the right food. There should be a manual for dog food. What I Ooh. would say to Fiona Blackett about Charlie is that he's a beagle. And if any dog <laughs> is going is to only come a close second to a Labrador with wanting to eat anything, it is a beagle. So I don't think it has it, to be overly selective. Why didn't they interview a, a 
I don't know, maybe a cat, like a, you know, a, a fussy cat that's, you know, 16 years old and just won't eat anything or a little chihuahua that, or a little oodly something that's just really fussy with their food. They've got Beagle Labrador, two dogs Absolutely. that eat anything, <laughs> yeah. including, including its own poo, probably. Yes, quite, quite <laughs> often, quite yeah. often. Um, now, it, it does go on and, uh, you know, and then it starts mentioning about the, the case that we've seen here in Victoria recently with the endospecine toxicity. Um, but they've got a quote here from um, Associate Professor David Thomas, a pet nutrition researcher at New Zealand's Massey Uni, uh, says that the way our pets eat is changing with society's fixation on personal well-being and the humanisation of our animals. You're not pet owners, you're pet parents now, Thomas says. One study, uh, a 2019 study of almost 2,200 pet owners found that more than half rated the importance of buying healthy food for their pet as equal to for themselves, while two in five said it was more important. Pet owners may get caught up in food trends instead of focusing on feeding their pets a nutritionally balanced, high quality, nutritious diet, the researchers warned. Thomas is critical of industry jargon, such as grain-free, which he says is nutritionally unnecessary. We've spoken about that previously. Yep. Research has also shown that dogs have genetically involved the ability to thrive on a diet rich in starch. While supportive of caring more about pet well-being, Thomas worries that owners are going too far by feeding human-grade food. There are about 9 million pet dogs and cats in Australia, and they willingly eat nutritious parts of animals killed for human consumption that might otherwise go to waste, like organs, scraps, and ground-up bone. The pet food industry should be complementary to the human food industry, Thomas says. We are struggling to feed the planet as it is. Yeah, now, good point. And, and I and, and that's the you know one of the really big take homes for me in this in this article, and it's something that I never never really twigged um, all that much, you know. But now I sort of see just how important that is, um, and also how I guess risky it is that we've got you know if, if people are feeding human grade uh, human quality meats and uh, to their uh, and animal products to their pets. Okay, I mean, just because you can afford it, that's great. But is that the right thing to be doing for the world? And mm. does your pet need it? You know, there are some that, okay, right, you might need to you know, come up with a specially formulated diet. And so therefore you don't have any other real options. But I think in general, we probably need to have some degree of um, rationalization, don't you think? You know, as far yeah. as what, you know, how, we, how we're trying to look after the planet anyway. And and uh, at Patreons, if you head over to to Patreon.com, you can uh, listen to Two Vets Talk Ethics. Um, yes, our, our side podcast. Our side where, side offshoot. We can yeah. go, go really deep on the on the pros and cons of human grade food. But I, I do agree with you, mate. I think I think we're very privileged to have pets in in our country. Essentially, I think. Yes. And and there is that issue of well, you know. Um, you know, if you're going to feed human grade food, you are taking food out of the, the human food chain where well, many people in the world are starving. So, um, but an interesting point I saw, a big message from the article is no matter whether you choose to feed raw, dry or canned, there is no one single good diet out there. Well, no, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Now, <laughs> we, we did sell them a little bit short earlier. Yeah. You said, but yes. not going to sell them short now. There is one out there it's called delicate care isn't it mate delicate hey. care it's been formulated yeah. with all the greatest of intentions from the prof who's put all of the bits and pieces together to try and make sure that it's a well-balanced nutritionally complete diet how do you like them apples guys yeah nice <laughs> so there you go yeah but no it's interesting mate it's really interesting that sort of stuff and uh one, one, one section I noticed in that article as well was there was a comment uh, made, a raw feeding is booming in the dog world. One Australian Facebook group has drawn almost 60,000 members since being created three years ago. Now, let me say, mate, what a resource that must, that must be. 60,000 raw food enthusiasts spouting their N equals one on how yes, good it yeah, is. Yes, experience and, of... And, yeah, oh, Wow. I just want to. I just want. To, um, I want to be. I want to be the sixty thousand at first. Just go on there and see what are they talking about today. What what what's um, the wisdom? Well, and here's, here's one of the um, one of the comments that, that came up under there. Um, uh, imagine if you had to eat the same thing every day for fifteen plus years. Omg, our much loved boy gets a blend of kibble, loves raw carrots in particular, a bone sometimes, or a scrambled egg. Meat from what we are having, plain cooked chicken, 
or some chopped cooked beef, sometimes a bit of gravy. He knows when dinner time <laughs> is and loves to eat when we do. He's part of the family, as he should be. And then someone's uh, done a little comment on top of that. Ha ha, imagine you sniff your friend's bums as a greeting, did your wheeze in public, licked your own bum, loved to find and eat skanky things you found in the park and sometimes ate actual poo. OMG, you'd be a dog. <laughs> Now, I don't really know what, you know. I love that, mate. That's a, yeah. that's a great balance, isn't it? Yeah. Just, uh, there's the comment section just balancing <laughs> life. I wonder if they get many comments like that on the on the Facebook page. Yeah, with the, the 60,000 proponents <laughs> of a raw food, feed, a raw food eating. You'd be quickly blocked, I reckon, if you put that comment on there. That's Absolutely. Sure. Yes. Uh, excellent. Now, I, um, uh, have we gone for time? Oh, we're going. We'll keep going. I've got a, 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 an article. Have you heard about Geronimo, mate? Uh, no, well, I, apart from it being a culturally culturally insensitive name for a pizza shop in Wonthaggy, Victoria, uh, Geronimo's Pizza. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, well, it's not twenty twenty one. Anyway, yeah, on that. no, not Geronimo. Great, no. Well, Geronimo is an alpaca. Oh, in okay, Britain. in right. Britain, uh, the verdict is in, and Geronimo must die, preferably, Gosh. preferably wow. by lethal injection. Crikey. This is from the Sydney Capital Morning Herald. Punishment. Yeah. Not since the United Kingdom's last state-sanctioned execution in 1964 has a death sentence captured so much public attention. Geronimo, thankfully, has no idea about the storm swirling around him because Geronimo is an alpaca and not particularly bright on matters legal. Right. His crime was... alpaca. Well, yeah. His crime was to test twice, twice test positive for bovine tuberculosis tb Ooh. and after a four-year battle which even ended up in the high court the animal is now living on borrowed time her position has solicited extraordinary support from radio stations television networks and newspapers some are even running live blogs and a collection of celebrities including joanna lumley from absolutely fabulous actor, wow. fa fa absolutely fa fabulous actor when in doubt don't she pleaded, please spare Geronimo. There's real doubt hanging over this death sentence. The clock started ticking on Geronimo, Geronimo when McDonald, an alpaca farmer. Oh, McDonald? Had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. E -I -E -I -O. And on and that, on that farm, farm, there used, a used to be an alpaca. Yeah, used, right. Well, used, used, was, an, was an alpaca. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's death sentence come down yet. From Gloucestershire. Gloucester. That's it. Gloucester. Yes. We'll Gloucester. go with what you said in West England. Imported him, him from New Zealand in 2017. Oh. Now, I thought New Zealand was free of TV. Interesting. Yeah. He tested well, no, negative. No, no, no. It's not. It's in, their, it's in their possums. Ah, it is too. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I remember having a possum pie and it said TB. No, I didn't have that. <laughs> he tested negative for the deadly disease before his trip to Britain, but has returned two positive readings since. Convinced the results were false positives, McDonald, oh McDonald, uh, launched legal action which Ordered culminated another test. E -I -E -I in, in a high court judge last week, siding with the government that Geronimo must go. McDonald is refusing to euthanize the alpaca herself, setting the scene for officers from the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs to take matters into their own hands. Rambo style. Yeah, Christine, Dr. Christine Middlemiss, Chief Veterinary Officer, said, while I sympathise with Miss McDonald's situation, we need to follow the scientific evidence and cull animals that have tested positive for TB to minimise spread of this insidious disease and ultimately to, eliminate, to eradicate the biggest threat to animal health in this country. And it really does beg the question, mate, that so many tests, is it TB or not to be? That's the question. Oh my goodness! Did you did you go through that entire article just to just to give yourself that little that little underarm lob there? You know, I, on this podcast, mate, I'm playing the long game. I've, <laughs> I've been building 166 episodes. I've been working up to what must be the pinnacle of my podcast career, right then, mate. You really had to pull the taffy on that one to get there. We we needed to pack lunch to get there. It was good though. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Oh. I mean, I'm there for it. Like that was, that was, that was, that was sweet. Almost poetic. The listener out there, when you got yourself up from the floor, just start, uh, just keep listening. There's plenty more of those. 
Wait another 166. And see, you'll one. get another there's one. A, there's yeah. another one. I'm working yeah. towards it. There's a lot of script writing involved. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you got anything more in the news or we got to this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Just, just, a, just a short one. Um, they, uh, so it, uh, I think this will be the, the last, last one that will, last time we'll mention it. The toxic pet food case closed, but no charges laid over the dead, over dead dogs. So this is uh, from ABC News, posted on Thursday, the 19th of August, uh, by Warwick Long and uh, Kelly Lazaro um, in response to the indispecine toxicity. Uh, no charges have been laid over the sale and manufacture of contaminated pet food, which killed 24 dogs and made a further 44 seriously ill with liver disease in Victoria. So you think those numbers are a little bit low. I think it was actually up around the... Uh, the, nearly the 70 odd that, um, that uh, well, had been affected. Well, it was definitely 25 deaths, wasn't there, mate? Was yours included yeah. in that? Yeah, yeah, well, hopefully. Um, All right, a joint, okay. A, a joint investigation by Prime Safe and Agriculture Victoria found pet food manufacturing laws were not broken and there was no fault in the supply chain. Wow. While retailers have recalled the toxic meat, authorities are concerned more dogs could die if pet owners still have the contaminated pet food in their freezers at home. The dogs ate meat from the Mafra district knackery in Gippsland that contained indispecine, a toxin found in low growing native Australian, uh, in the low grow, growing native Australian herb in the indigo fera species. We know that the knackery receives some horses from the Northern Territory and the Northern Territory is where the plant produces this toxin grows in abundance, Victoria's Chief Veterinary Officer Graham Cook said. The risk window between the 31st of May and the 3rd of July is the important window, and that is why we're asking owners to check if they have frozen pet meat in their freezers, Dr. Cook said. Throw it out if you're in doubt. This is a rare and unusual event in Victoria. It has never happened before, and this is by far the most likely pathway, Dr. Cook said. A truckload of about 25 horses from the Northern Territory bound for Queensland was redirected to Victoria due to COVID lockdowns. But not all of them were processed at the Nacri and Mafra and authorities are trying to determine whether the others made their way into another area of the pet food supply chain. Wow. To the best of our knowledge, we have no evidence of that and we have been working with other knackeries and processes, Dr. Cook said. Dr. Cook said, the Nash said national horse traceability standards were also being reviewed. Mm. Northern Territory travelling rural vet Campbell Costello said there has been an increase in reports of neurological problems in horses caused by indospecine. Horses are more resistant to the liver damage effect of this plant, but they are quite susceptible to the neurological problems caused by it, he said. He said that on his travels, he'd heard stories from locals saying they had seen an increase in bizarre neurological disease in horses and unexplainable deaths. The low growing herb responds well to rain and is tasty to livestock due to its high protein content. There's no cure for this, he said. Once the animal, whether it's a dog or a horse that gets it, we can only give supportive therapy such as fluids and maybe some anti-inflammatories. But once the damage is done, it's done. Push for pet food standards. In a statement, the Victorian Agriculture Minister, Mary Ann Thomas, said the government was eagerly awaiting the findings of the working group established by the Commonwealth almost three years ago oh, to wow. review the regulation of pet food. I have written to Federal Minister David Littleproud seeking an update on the working group and to encourage a nationally consistent approach to ensuring the safety and quality of pet food, she said. The Australian Veterinary Association, RSPCA Australia and the Pet Food Industry Association of Australia have also written to Mr Littleproud calling for national regulations. Currently, the only standard that exists is a voluntary standard and that standard is not audited ABA representative Dr. Sue Foster said. Pets are family members. The community expectation is that pet food should be regulated in exactly the same way as human food. And the ABA strongly recommends that there is a nationwide government regulation of pet food. One of the sticking points in the government addressing this is that there seems to be nowhere to park this legislation. It can't go under the human framework. It doesn't fit under the animal welfare framework. And so this seems to be causing the government some concern about who should actually be responsible in each state and territory and at a federal level, Dr. Foster said. Mr. Littleproud said that while the regulation of the, the domestic pet food industry was a decision for the states and territories, he shared the concerns. That's why I set up the Pet Food Review Working Group, he said. The group has taken into consideration the recommendations of a Senate inquiry into the safety of pet food a little over three years ago. Yeah, right. Wow, it's slow, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So well, it's interesting, America's, they've got their Association of American Fee Control Officials 
guidelines. Right. Yeah. Uh, AFCO. AFCO. Yep. Yeah. AFCO. I, yeah, I know. I know. Um, a lot of the uh, pet foods, the higher quality pet foods, follow that. Definitely. Um, pretty sure Delicate Care does. Yeah. But um, uh, I wonder if they could. You know, look. I guess they're looking at that closely. But yeah, it's interesting. That it's taking so long to get some traction. Well, I think that's the thing. That's um, you know, a there's been a lot of stuff that's happened in the last you know, 18 months in Australia. We had bushfires Seems at the to start be. of last mm. year and then COVID um, oh, yeah. since then. So I think there's, um, it, well, and, and unfortunately we've had these other flare-ups of the um, of, of different toxicity things that have come up in the last couple of years, but really nothing seems to be changing or moving. This one makes lots of noise now and there's lots of people that are up in arms and everything, but again, it'll probably unfortunately fall by the wayside yeah. until there's another one and then it'll be mm. four years or five years. And so unless mm. this working group comes out, but yeah, unless they can find someone that's going to take on this as being the regulation for it, as well as that it needs to have teeth to be able to uh, prosecute people that are doing the wrong thing. Mm. I, I just, I just, you know, I just worry that this is something where they're just waiting for it to go away and then they can worry about something else, mm. which yeah, concerns me. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't seem, I mean, when it, we're, we're, we're right up on uh, on the legalities and the, you know, politics of, of big, you know, of, of getting, you know, legislation cleared and that sort of thing, mate. So Finger I, can on the pulse. I can, I can understand our frustration with the three years and where yeah. it's at. Certainly that sounds like us, mate. Yeah. That, well, they need us in there. I'm pretty sure we, we'll get it going, won't we? We'll get in the working group and we'll try yeah. to start to sort things out. We'll go in there with some donuts and say, all right, guys, let's see let's what's going out. on here. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's nut this out right now. Yeah. We can, can we, is there any way that we can regulate these, these, uh, this, you know, sushi like degustation menu that we've got from, from Hugo? What about talking of that? What about a master chef for pets? Oh. Where you cook, who can cook the, the, uh, the, decus, the deconstructed, um, you know, kibble? The yes. deconstructed kibble for uh, for Boomer the uh, the Labrador. So so you just take what's in the, the you take the kibble you you mallet it all up and then you mm. you section it microscopically you know, uh, molecularly yeah. into animal component and, and and vegetable component and yeah and reform it into into the duck and the you know and the uh, the kangaroo or whatever might be in the in the yep yeah, just, just and then you grow it individually bit together into, bit together yeah. yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and then the judges are uh, you know two cats and a dog yeah but not a labrador so we know it. they're going to eat it no, anyway yeah no yeah so you wouldn't have a, you have a really fussy sort of something that just yeah doesn't eat doesn't eat anything like, like a little papillon that's only just been carried around in a handbag or something yeah, for a right. few years yeah he's five kilos overweight but doesn't eat very much. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get many of those, do we? Hey? No, no, no. Oh, no. There's a, he did. I, I just can't get him to eat yeah. anything. Yeah. It's, it's just, I, unbelievable, you know? And, and then he's, yeah, but I, just, I don't understand how he's four kilos overweight. But well, <laughs> um, unless he's found a way of turning air into energy, he is yeah. eating something. There's, yeah. You keep an eye on his mouth that sometimes something is moving past his lips. That's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it's what you feed him. He's you're obviously doing really well, so keep it up. Although feed a bit less, it's a bit less. Yeah, you may yeah. be a lot less. Yeah, yeah, all right. exactly. All advice on this show is generally nature, so please consult your veterinarian before following any advice for your pet. We do our best to provide the most up to date information as veterinary medicine is continually advancing and changing. Please let us know if you missed anything or if you need any clarification. Uh, Lewis, I wanted to talk about lily toxicities because it's been yeah, a while good, since mate. we've spoken about yeah, it. Yeah, so, yeah, um, yeah. And we actually had a case recently at work where um, right. where, where a cat had eaten lilies. The owner saw he, the cat eat the lilies the day before, and then the cat was looking pretty crook um, the next day, right. and, and we brought it in. And interestingly, because she'd seen it eat the lilies and were able to jump on it really quickly, we've actually managed to turn this cat around, and he's actually not showing any signs of any, any kidney failure at wow. the moment so wow. um so taking a few steps back so we know that in lilies in cats that there is some sort of toxin that is in the lily plant it's in the leaves it's in the petals it's in the it's in the pollen um and what happens is cats eat it and it gets into their bodies and it can cause an, a very severe acute kidney failure yep yep yeah, yeah. so we, they can also i mean they don't have to eat it they can even 
Well, supposedly they could brush up against the plant and get some, you know, some pollen on their coat and then lick it off that way. Lick it well. off. That's so, right. Yeah. 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 So, so it's I guess for our eating it, but yeah. 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 But yeah. Yep. Um, so, um, so the and your clinical signs of the urine, uh, I think they, they can get a little bit vomity initially, but then um, usually then these cats are lethargic, off food. Um, they may or may not be drinking a lot. Very lethargic, very very unwell kitty cats, and that's certainly what we saw with this patient of ours. He came in and he was he was pretty lethargic. Um, and interestingly, though, so we got a urine sample from him, and his urine was just absolutely chock full of casts. So these were right, um, yeah. things from his, um, like basically the lining of his kidneys, the tubules were just sloughing off because of the toxic just, effect just of what it showing there's Showing there's damage to the kidneys. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Um, and interestingly at that stage, his kidney values hadn't actually gone up very much. And so we put him on a drink, we hit him hard with fluids. Um, we then, he, he went off to, um, I think the owner actually elected to take him to uh, to the Lord Smith over the weekend um, because it came in on a Friday night. So he was in there over the weekend, just getting hammered with fluids all week, uh, all the weekend. Um, and his kidney values were looking okay and he started wow. eating all right. And so brought him home um, and we did bloods on him. So it was two weeks after the initial, uh, the initial ingestion. And yet yeah, urine concentration is looking all right and kidneys are looking okay too. So, wow, um, so I think it was purely and simply that he had of the owner not brought him in when she did, I think the outcome would have been very, very different because the amount of casts that were in these kidneys and his kidneys were big and they were painful um, yeah, to right. palpate. So he was definitely having the, um, a, a, there was definitely damage going on in those kidneys. But the fact that we may manage to turn it around, obviously we don't know, is there still any under, underlying damage mm. in there? Because we know we've spoken about it previously that our blood tests and urine tests are really only going to show if you've got less than about sort of 33% of functioning kidneys left. So this cat could be sitting at 38%. And we could all be high-fiving thinking that mm. everything's great and he's wiped out nearly 70% of his kidneys. Mm. But Whatever he's got there is doing the job. So that's a pretty Fail. good start. So. Yeah, that's a really good effort. So I think uh, um, I, one of the other signs as well is sometimes they can be urinating more or sometimes not urinating at all at could all. be a sign as well. That's so exactly that, right. that's quite urgent to get to that. But uh, yeah, if, you, if you're getting some, uh, you got a bouquet of flowers or you're getting a, a plant, an indoor plant, you know, to steer clear of those lilies is uh, definitely, definitely a good tip, mate. We are, uh, we actually saw someone ring up during the week. They had eaten some tulip, uh, parts of a tulip. Oh, really? Yeah. And so right. we, uh, it was, it was a quick scramble for the vets there to, you know, sort of do a bit of research and that sort of thing. And I thought, oh, and, uh, and it turns out that the tulip bulbs are toxic. Oh, okay. But yes. not particularly the tulip flowers or the tulip leaves. They, they might cause a little bit of um, some gastro issues, maybe a little bit of vomiting diary, but not particularly toxic as far as the leaves and plants. So, so um, the cat had just eaten a bit of a bit of the, uh, one of the petals, I think. So that, that was yeah, right. Fun. But but interesting. We're like, I heard that. I thought the receptionist said lilies, and I was like, oh, bring it straight down. And then was like, no, Quick, it's actually it tulip. It's tulip. actually tulip. So interesting. But yeah, the 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 uh, the bulbs are toxic, but uh, but not the part those parts of the plant. But the lilies are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Lilies. Any part of lilies. So yeah, don't give anyone lilies if they've got a cat. Um, yes. like we got a um, we we had someone bring around a um uh. uh it was to, to our house. They bought um, a, a thing of flowers around. It was actually for where, when we moved in one of the, um, my, this is back in the middle of last year, back when we actually, you know, in between COVID lockdowns, yeah. somebody bought it, somebody bought in a bunch of flowers as a welcome to your new home. home. Thank you very much. Full of lilies. Thanks. Right. See you later. Open with the green bin. <laughs> thunk, yeah, straight in. straight yeah, out. Yeah. yeah. And did they, um, I mean, well, if anyone is popping around to Robbie's place, he'd love, love some flowers, but also perhaps a larger belt too, if, you, if you're listing any listers and a zipper, maybe a zipper. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, uh, he could do, he's got a, he's got enough buttons, maybe. Plenty of buttons, plenty of buttons. Yes. If anybody <laughs> needs any buttons, let me know, you know. Um, you still got them, mate. Yeah, I, I, absolutely, I actually do. I've got them in the selling kit. <laughs> I might take photo, put that on Patreon as well. What do you reckon? The jar of buttons. There the jar go. of buttons. Absolutely. Uh, all righty, guys. Well, look, if you've got any questions or you um you want Robbie's address to pop around and give Pick him a, some buttons, a, a bigger belt, or yeah, you need some buttons, get onto some two vets talk pets at gmail.com. 
Yes. Um, we're also on on Instagram. We're on uh, we're on Facebook. Um, uh, anyway, guys, no, seriously, get onto us. If you got any questions? Um, yeah, like we said, and uh, and also go to Patreon. There might be a couple of pictures there we might put on there. For, yes, for, for you guys to check out. So, Alrighty, guys, that's good. Scratch you later. Peace out, everyone. Bye. Thanks for listening to Two Vets Talk Pets with Lewis and Robbie. To chat further about this week's episode or ask the guys any questions, search Two Vets Talk Pets on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or send an email to Two Vets Talk Pets at gmail.com. You can find Lewis on Twitter with the handle at Vet Behaviorist, and more importantly, as the two pet heroes return to their day job of saving animals' lives, be sure to thank them with a five star review on iTunes. Every time you do, a small, cute animal will receive a cuddle.